this could be a hoax. Well, okay, nobody believed him, except that the Chinese government in the last few years have released these pictures. There's hundreds of pyramids in China. And uh, the Chinese government actually got the farmers to farm on top of the pyramids so that they, they wouldn't be so apparent by satellite. <laughs> and the reason why, so here's the poor farmer that got the job. <laughs> the reason why they were doing that is because they didn't want the Western world to know about these pyramids. Why? Because the legends that comes with these pyramids is that the sun gods built them and that the sun gods were blue-eyed, blonde-haired people. As far as the Chinese government went, uh, looked at this, blonde-haired, blue-eyed people had to be Europeans. And the last thing they wanted was European people being responsible for some of the most ancient knowledge of the Chinese tradition. So they didn't want those pyramids to be known by the West. They did find the mummies of these blonde hair, blue eyed people in the high desert of China. Over 500 mummies were found all very tall, absolutely not Asian people. And then you go to the forbidden city of China, the city that holds all the knowledge of the universe, all the knowledge of the sun gods. And at the entrance of the city is the Sphinx, the lion, which in both Egypt and Chinese tradition are the guardian of the knowledge. They guard the knowledge under their paws. And when you look closely at the paw, what do you find? Uh, <laughs> A spherical intersecting pattern of the flower of life which generates 64 tetrahedron drift. Guardian of the knowledge. Uh, fairly old, but the, this, uh, this section of China was largely rebuilt and fairly recent, uh, you know. But it's all coming from very ancient tradition that's passed on orally throughout the ages. That's why you find still the knowledge being present. Although the knowledge of the sun gods has been very, very confused and diluted throughout the ages. So, do we have evidence of the sun gods? We do. These are skulls that are found in temples in South America. This is uh, in the Peruvian Museum. Um, I call it Conhead. Um, uh, when the archaeologists found this, they said, oh, this is the result of skull deformation. <laughs> you know how the ancient tradition they would bend their head to deform them. Now, they did do that. You know, this is the bust of Nanfertiti, for instance. Um, Tutankhamun did have a distorted, deformed head. There's many skulls like that. But what, when you read the ancient text and they say, um, they talk about deforming their head, they say that they did that to imitate the sun god, to become sun gods themselves. Now, if you deform your head, right, today, it doesn't matter how much you deform it. 
you will never be able to exceed the volume capacity of your skull. Your head might look really weird, but the volume inside will be exactly the same. In these cases, the volume of these skulls, the inside volume of these skulls, are over twice the natural volume of the human skull. The normal volume of the human skull. These are not the result of skull deformation. You cannot do that by deforming your skull. The other thing that's interesting is that the hole at the bottom of the skull here where the atlas goes in, the spine, tells you how big the person was, right? Because you can figure it out from the size of the spine. These people had to be between 12 and 15 feet tall. There was giants on the earth. Many ancient texts talks about the sun gods as being giants. These are very, very big people. Um, and the fact that there's multiple of these skulls found in temples all around South America tells you that it's not the result of some deformation. These skulls were found in South America and Mexico. Um, here is some of the Mexican skulls. The early ones were South American skulls. Um, this one actually has a larger volume than the cone head. And uh, this one is the largest volume ever found. Uh, Mexico and uh, the facial features are missing but the skull is intact and it's enormous that's the eye sockets so you can imagine how large that forehead was and here is the uh, the uh, each lobe uh, each hemisphere of the skull of the brain seem to have developed independently in this case and uh, making it enormous. Go ahead. On the prior slide, mm -hmm. uh, am I correct in saying that the, uh, the orbits of the eyes are a good deal larger than normal? Oh, yeah. Much larger than normal. This person had huge eyes. And there's all sorts of features on these skulls that are not normal. For instance, in these cases, many of the feature facial features in the jaws don't belong to an homo sapien. They're a mix between various species that uh, are not supposed to be mixed together. Here is Tutankhamun. Even Tutankhamun seemed to have a larger than expected skull. Here's his brother as well. Now, um, there's many instances in the Egyptian and the Mayan and the Inca uh, scripts where they describe that the sun god, including in the Bible, where they describe that the sun god actually mixed and had children with men, with women uh, of the human species. And that, that generated a whole new species which was half sun gods, half man. So here, these might be evidence of this alt, you know, altered species, of this mix. And you would expect that these people would become pharaohs because they would have all sorts of capacity that the average man didn't. So here, we're starting to see a whole new picture of the, of the history of human being. And in, mingled in that picture is the information that these sun gods tried to give to man. 